have some tequila, but please don't bother the guards or workers. Thank you, Rangers. You know, I'm not feeling too well. I wonder if it's this heat. I think I'm gonna sit down for a bit. Ah, the strangers I've been hearing so much about. Strangers? Can we eat the strangers, Dengi? No, you idiot. We'll not eat the strangers. Yet. Okay, Dengi. Oh, mm. Vegan like possum meat. You look smarter than your average jerk, and more ambitious than the townsfolk of Rodia. Those are qualities I could use. Unless, of course, you think what we're doing here is wrong. Cat litter? Oh, of course. You're impatient to get to Hollywood before the winter winds clear the radiation belt. Well, how you spend your free time is your concern, but we have no cat litter. You're welcome to what you find in town, but... I don't know of any. Perhaps the ugly doctor. The richest and most influential of the farmers that work the crater. And a stubborn man, but I'm working on him. He'll come around in the end. Dante asked you to bring her home? Why don't you ask her if she wants to go? She's a grown woman. She can make up her own mind. I meant no insult. I'm a jerk myself. A leather jerk. Though I didn't start out that way. They captured me in the mountains of Glendale. They were going to skin me and eat me, I believe, but my will was greater than theirs. I talked them out of it, then led them out of the hills with promises of gold and women and leather jackets beyond their wildest dreams. <laughs> Since then, they've been mine to command. They're the sheep, and we are the wolves. 
It's the natural order of things. This town was as open as a hooker's legs before we saved it from the synths. All were welcome. Nobody was turned away. No tariff to get in. All the policies of that ridiculously idealistic mayor who believed that sharing Rodia's wondrous bounty would bring civilization back to Los Angeles. Absurd. Making people pay through the nose for Rodia's wondrous bounty will bring civilization back to Los Angeles. That's how the world works. Do you know that before we took over, 90% of that farmland in that crater was devoted to fruits, vegetables, and grazing land for possums? What a waste. Now, 99% is devoted to agave plants, all of which goes directly into the distillery to be turned into booze. And from there, into money in the bank. It is a mistake to think that muscle alone wins in this world. Any one of my three best men, Biggin, the Greek, or Pat the Axe, could kill me with a pinch of their fingers. But, as the great warlord Gandhi once said, strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from an indomitable will. I live that motto every day. I die if I forget it no idea what their deal is, but I'm glad they were giving Rodia a hard time. It gave us the opportunity we were looking for. If you don't know enough to get out of the way of progress, progress will run you over. <laughs> or perhaps hang you from a tower for everyone to see what happens when you impede progress. Now he can see the casino I made of his tavern, the distillery I made of his backyard still, the money-making machine I made out of his bank. He oversees operations at the distillery, fairly smart for a walking bicep, but a brutal man, and his private life does not bear examining. All I care about is that he's steady and loyal and doesn't drink, and he can kill a dozen men without breaking a sweat. The axe may be dumber than Biggin, it's an open question, but he's a berserker in battle, and easily kept in line with drink and whores. Just don't touch his axe. More precious to him than his manhood, it would seem. People talk about the beauty of those towers. Uh, I don't see it, but they're very useful for making an example of someone. A hundred percent profit. It's not so much a casino as a green felt abattoir. And for those who like a different sort of game, there are hookers in the back. The opportunity with the most potential in this dreary little town, and its owner, the mayor and his lazy son, did nothing with it. I don't think they produced 20 barrels of booze in a year. I'm working on producing 20 barrels in a week. We'll be rich. Of course, it would be easier if I didn't have to deal with either of them. The intricacies of high finance are <laughs> no doubt beyond you, but I'm very pleased with what we've done with the bank. Mr. Gecko has been a helpful and judicious partner in this enterprise. Another profitable scheme, the townsfolk spend both bullets and seed on my harlots, leaving them weaker in spirit as well as defense. Spoken like a true pragmatist. Very good. Perhaps we can work together. So let's come to terms. I want your muscle and your brains. What do you want? Money? Power? Something else? A very good thing to want, and so easy to get. Work for me, and you'll have plenty of it. And it'll only get better as we go on. Rodia's only the beginning. A beachhead. Soon we'll be expanding our operations to all LA. Are you ready to work? Right. Good. First assignment. Just to see how you do with simple instructions. We've convinced almost all the farmers to convert their fields to agave plants, but there are still a few holdouts. One is a woman named Jess, who still wants to grow broccoli or some such garbage. This kind of uncivic behavior cannot be tolerated. I want you to sell these agave cuttings to Jess for 40 bullets and convince her to start planting by any means necessary. Then bring me back what she paid. And if you don't succeed, 
don't bother coming back. Do well with Jess, and I'll know you're ready for bigger things. Hey, I, I just saw these guys over at Dante's. Did you, my dear? Well, I'm glad they know the way. They may be returning there soon. Carry on, Rangers. <laughs> 